Hello. <laughs> Let's wait for a little bit, one minute to see um, if we have um, um, Hi there. Hello. Hello. We have, I think we uh, have six participants, right? Now we also have Monica here. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yeah, that's great. I was checking how many uh, people still in the main room. One, two, oh, no, one, two, three, and four. I think in any case, we will start officially according to the schedule uh, in two minutes. But before that, I think me, maybe we can just, you know, like as in a small group, we can maybe just chat a little bit, especially from mm -hmm. Rafael and Monica. Um, how's your feeling so far about the workshop, about the topic, trust collaboration? Yeah, feel free to speak up. I'm, I'm liking the presentations so far. I. I'm pretty much enjoying, like, I haven't published anything in here. I just, like, I was invited because, like, I am also from, from the University of Leeds. Chen invited me, and I'm pretty much liking what I'm seeing. I, I know most of the speakers as well, pretty big names, and, and I like the discussion that, that we're having. Cool. Yeah, I, I also like it. So as I introduced, I'm not um, too much into the field. I come from another area, but I think the topic is quite relevant for the area I'm working on. So therefore, I'm, I'm very fascinated about what's, what's going on here and what is being discussed. So I like it very much. Nice. So sounds like we are um, fully prepared for the mirror board, right? I think, I, let me just quickly also share my screen. Just to, for a test, can you see the board? Yes. Yeah. Great. I have a question in the board. I do not appear under my name, but on the guest maker. So I um, just wonder if I can. Okay. Um, I don't mind. You cannot change your name, unfortunately. So, um, yeah. mm -hmm. But now we all know like the <laughs> maker is you. <laughs> all saw, right. Uh, just one comment, Tini. I saw uh, Yuri's name is also in on the board, but he's He's not in the in the Zoom. That's true, and also Vino, right? Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. so. I will check. It. Yeah. Um. Please go ahead, Chen or Hailong. Please check it. And mm -hmm. um. Nevertheless, I think I start uh the first warm up session. So according to the schedule, now we are like in this icebreaker session and still some homework to do already for the warm-up session. So this part is basically um, to answer one question, to introduce yourself by answering one question. What is a top concern or your question about this trust um, topic or this trust collaboration topic? Like for example, this, uh, this is my question, like how does time criticality or like the time pressure gonna affect uh, the driver or the passenger's trust uh, towards the system? Just like yesterday's parking scenario, which is a kind of low speed, less time critical scenario, might um, yeah, relatively lead to a higher level of trust. So just feel free to put down your question or concern, or even just a keyword about the trust here. And we also quite encourage think a lot. So you can speak out whatever you are thinking of.
so we can put more than one question. Please go ahead. Yeah, I should have like put S after questions. After question, yeah. So if you are finished already, um, yeah, feel free to maybe just introduce um, your question a little bit. Mm -hmm. Who would like to go first or who has finished? Okay, I can. So my question was this one in here that I'm moving around. So how, how yeah. trust affects driver's case information acquisition process during takeover situations? So basically this is part of my research question and my PhD, which is about how different case behavior strategies affect takeover. So one thing that I've been noticing in my, in my research is that sometimes drivers don't trust in the system or sometimes drivers over trust in the system and this leads to a poor gaze behavior scanning strategy. For instance, drivers during like a lane keeping, mm -hmm. they just look to the blind spot uh, system and without looking to the mirrors or the other way around. Like sometimes they are doing a lane change and they ignore that the system is there to help them and just use as it was a manual drive, but with way more workload involved because they are not checking the system status or anything like this. Yeah, I think it's like a, already a tough question and might also relate it to our, uh, the, like the following parts. So looking forward to the discussion. And I think, ah, we also have a new participants, right? Hi, welcome, um, Yuli. Sorry, I just saw your, uh, your is, um... There is a note on the board A, but I saw you are in the um, breakout room B. So I was wondering why you are in the, not in the correct room or you are not in the not correct board. So I just move you <laughs> in this room um, to let you decide uh, which one Sorry, are you. In the... yeah. Oh yeah, uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be, I think, in group B, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. so me, that's just. The... Mm -hmm. Romy as well. Yeah. So if you are uh, in the group, you are uh, joining the group B discussion, then it should be another uh, link to the mirror, I guess. Wait. This is which room is which room is which group is that? This and group now, A. Yeah. We are the group A, and the board is for group A. You saw this. Uh, the ah, middle, okay. I click the, mm -hmm. in the Zoom. Okay. So. Just All right. Yeah, I'm supposed to be group group B, so okay. I'm so, clicking the um, link in the email. Okay. Still nice to see you here, Yuri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just confirm. Uh, the group. We're the uh, group, though. Okay. Email. Given the time, I think we should continue. Uh, although I see a lot of people still working on the I think um, questions, which is very nice. Um, all right, so I think uh, next will be our official uh, first part of the um, brain writing, and I will hand it over to Chen. Um, do you want to still use your... Yeah, that's great. So thanks, D, for your uh, screen sharing. So now we are in the next session. Um, we are going to talk about what situation will result in overtrust or undertrust problem in your uh, in your perspective, in your view. So let's say when you are inside of the vehicle, no matter it's uh, it's from level one to level five, no matter it's a truck, 
uh, per private car or the shared bus. Uh, imagine you are the passenger or the driver in that kind of vehicle. Um, what kind of situation would give you, uh, would, do you think will result in the over trust or under trust problem? So in the coordinate, uh, as we, decide, as we decide, uh, discussed in the previous um, discussion, um, the X, <laughs> someone is already working on that, that's great. So uh, the, X, <laughs> the X axis is reliability of automated vehicles. Uh, so in the first and the third um, quadrants, it's basically they are matched with uh, of the reliability of, the, uh, of automated vehicle and trust. But in the second and in the fourth qu quadrants, uh, when they are not much, uh, there are some problems like with higher trust, but with um, lower reliability of the automated vehicle, there should be the over trust. Uh, we have a few um, references or examples of situations you could consider, like uh, their past experience with AV, uh, the other's function or misleading information in the social media or in the news, or just some different, some um, not clear scenarios or the drivers or passengers own uh, high workload. So just feel free to put any situations you could come up with uh, in these two uh, quadrants. So go ahead. And you can also speak out. Time-wise for this session, we got like uh, 30 minutes. So uh, feel free to put as many ideas as possible.
I did a mistake, sorry. Oh, I, it's fine. Uh, I, I was supposed to copy one, one sticky note. I copied the whole board, sorry. <laughs> I thought I locked it. Hmm. I don't use Miro for such a long time, sorry. No worries. It's interesting to see. It seems we have more under trust scenarios, mm -hmm. situations. <laughs> but actually, not from my side. I think I put like three for over trust, but only one for under trust. Uh, Maybe I'm because of my sorry research background. Because somehow my research is really on like using HMD uh, uh, as a real passenger in car. So somehow I really want the automation to work. So I really uh, over trust the system, I guess. I see. So I, I try to split. No, no, no worries. I try to get like one of each every time. <laughs> Do 
we need to go through our sticky notes now. Yeah. Or... Uh, mm -hmm. we, can, uh, we have, are you ready for the little bit more talking here? Um, yeah, so we can, maybe let's go, let's start from the lies, sticky notes, overtrust part. Jingyi, <laughs> uh, can you? Explain? Yeah. That's great. Um, anyone want to talk about their sticky notes here? Um, I can say a little bit about this one I put here. Uh, like the sailor says, it's fully automation. As I read from the news, like a lot of manufacturers, they really say mm -hmm. their they are, they are automated vehicles are high level, are like fully or something like that. Or even uh, the example here, autopilot, the name of that is really misleading. So people maybe may just feel it's, it sounds auto, it sounds fully, so I will just really rely on that. Even Tesla was sued for this. Yes. Ah, yeah. Uh, did they change think... their name for this autopilot? System? They had like the, the feature now is not named the autopilot anymore, but it was called Tesla Auto or something like this. And they said like, uh -huh. and they they needed to rename because it was sued after a crash saying like, I was not, I, the name was misleading because I didn't know I was supposed to supervise the automation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Anyone want to talk about there? Uh... I, can, I can talk mm -hmm. one of mine here, like this one here. So one thing that I, I believe it's true is that even one person that knows like it's experienced with their, their system and they have, they might have their trust calibrated by a, a good like mental model of the system may get complacent as they are engaged with an NDRT and they start to like like focus their attention in the NDRT and tunnel their vision and over relying on the system, not necessarily consciously. I do have a one like really related to I also put here like I will just yeah group it a little bit here. Um, so as a real passenger, I think. Um, yeah, during NDRT, and usually would assume there is a human driver, and I think this is, uh, is exactly the situation as a real estate passenger gonna overtrust the system because he or she might mm -hmm. thought, yeah, there is a human driver who gonna monitor the automation system, but I mean, in um, L5 autonomous vehicles, the driver, human driver, gonna also become sort of a passenger state, maybe monitoring passenger state, not a passive one. But I think this is also a situation, especially for real estate passengers with overtrust system. Mm, yeah. I saw like this kind of situation in Waymo. Uh, Waymo's um, automated vehicle, they have they, they have their users sitting on the rear seat, but they also I, I'm not sure if they have the authority to stop the vehicle or something like that, but they indeed can do something and do the man driving task, which when I, when I watch the video, I feel, wow, that looks so <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> so, oh. yeah. Okay, carry on. Anyone want, uh, how long do you want to talk about that? Yeah, money? yeah this one, I, I write. Mm -hmm. I, I write this one. Mm -hmm. So I focus on the limitation of the system. So if I don't know the limitation of the system, I will, uh, oh, easy to over trust. Just so like you, you said, said that the sitter never told you the limitation of the system. They always say, oh, this is a full, fully automation. We have a very high function. So that that is a very uh, big problem, I think. Some, sometimes the user don't, don't know the, for example, the ACC ha have have to use the ACC on the highway, but don't you, you but you cannot use the ACC on, on the, for example, on the, in, in, in the city. So that is a very big problem, I think. Um, I just want, have a quick question here. Uh, have you, mm -hmm. uh, any of you use use the other system like ACC or then keeping assistant in your daily life or have you experienced no. that in person? No. Okay. That's 
I once had an experience, but it was not a, a full-fledged um, ACC system or other system. It, it, yeah, it allowed you to take your hands off for a certain time, but um, you were supposed to take it back. And I feel yeah. very stressed, but this was just a test car, so I, I, I would not generalize it. I played before with a linky pin, like my linky. one of my friends had like a car with a with a linky pin, and I tried to drive once. It was so stressful for me that I turned it off. Really? <laughs> uh, although it's called assistance, uh, it will be really interesting to see how people really really react to that. Yeah, really I actually really have. Mm -hmm. I actually have one like regarding the mode confusion. I think. Um, somehow like this assistive uh, system, right? Um, I think the mode confusion is also going to cause overtrust issue, especially when I switch from the high automation mode or from the others from the ACC function to a lower mode or to a lower automation level. Mm. Yeah. After I have an open question. Does everyone, every Everyone know the levels of the automation? Uh, I do. You mean the, the definition of each level? Or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think... You mean the SAE levels, right? Yeah, SAE level. Mm. I don't think everyone understand the detail of each levels. So mm. this is the problem. Mm. Uh, you mean like any, uh, everyone like in this conference or everyone? Oh, no, no, no. Every, okay. everyone. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Public, 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 it is, it is a, it's a very big problem. Like, yeah. yeah. Because it's technical information. It's easy for us like that deal with automation to understand this. But understanding like level two and level three, they are functionally the same thing. But one you are supposed to observe and the other one no, because... There's no recognition of driver state, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have another one in here just to put that, like, uh, another thing that I believe that should be, like, a factor for overtrust is, like, fatigue and stress. Like, whenever you are more, like, agitated, irritated, or, or fatigued, you are more reliant on delegating your responsibilities to, to a system to, that supposedly can allow you to relax a little bit, even though we, it's not necessarily the case. Mm. Yes, I have a similar one, this one. So that's... Uh, yeah. Put that together. Yeah. This things why me, the novice driver as well might be... I'm actually really bad at driving. I really count on the future autonomous cars to help me. I'm so bad at driving as a novice driver as well. Mm -hmm. It just reminds me of a, uh, a recent experience. In, even in the simulator, I experienced the, I was the pilot for, I mean, in a pilot experiment. And to be honest, I don't have any driving experience. So when, they, <laughs> when, the, when the automation mode was on, I would feel like, oh my God, someone really <laughs> saved me. So I feel I really rely on that. Even it's just a a, a few a few seconds automation. I feel really really rely on that. So maybe I'm the novice driver here. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Monica, do you have any comments here? Um, I, I, I would have a, a general question. I'm not sure if it fits right here. I put it here. What is the right level of trust? So we are always um, speaking about over and under, but what is the, the right level? So what, what would we, we like to have for people to feel? Should it be slightly over or slightly under? Or what is exact trust level? I think that's a really good question. And I think one takeaway from the talks I got, like to answer this question, is first of all, like depend on the scenarios I would say. Like in, under certain scenarios, um, maybe let's say like under the uh, time critical scenarios, um, even like fast speed scenarios on the highway. And um, I think in that case, maybe the appropriate level of trust will be 
um, expected as a little bit lower here, for example, but maybe in low speed car parking scenario, we could have a, an appropriate trust level a bit higher. Mm -hmm. And yeah, to me, I think there is no fixed right trust level. It's always depend on the scenario complexity and it might also depend on the individual differences. If it's a experienced driver uh, or a well-educated driver, uh, well informed of the automation levels or it's um, non-professional drivers. And also, it's um, it's uh, also related to a question I I, I recently was uh, I, I'm doing like what kind of the relationship between trust uh, and other concepts and acceptance like how many trust can really help them to accept this automated vehicle or um, like we said even it's not comfortable they still want to use that or they still like that feeling they, 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 they use that feature um, so i think it's here it's the similar to the trust it's not the the main determinant um to the real usage, which might be the our final <laughs> aim, uh, no matter how much they, I mean, uh, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's a really high trust. Um, I mean, if they don't really use that, so it's a. I, I feel personally, I feel it's a quite complicated thing to tackle these relations between them. There is. <laughs> but, like, mm -hmm. I have uh, some comments for this uh, question. Yeah. Uh, firstly, this question is very uh, complex. Uh, when we talk about what is the right tr 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 trust level, we have to know, we have to understand how does the trust generate. So in my uh, viewpoint, it's very, uh, it's very, how, how to say, it's based on the uh, situation awareness. Mm -hmm. For example, if the driver, if the user fully understand the limitation of the system, mm -hmm. the, the, and the performance of the system, in that state, the driver, if the driver can uh, understand the system's intention and the driver can uh, predict the system's behavior in that that state we could say the driver is right trust in the system that is just a my view point uh, may i um, may i perhaps add something because uh, yes as i said i'm not uh, too deep into the topic but i just wonder what would be a model of trust for for this autonomous driving would it be similar to um us uh, entering an airplane or we i mount a bus or i i, I get into my own car so what level of trust um, do we think that should be the goal uh, and um, is there something comparable or is it um, more in the uh, in the area of what um, I think it was? Uh, I forgot Maximilian yesterday said um, the, the example with a dog. <laughs> Do I trust mm -hmm. a dog or don't I trust a dog? So that's something um, that's very individual, very personal. And the other examples I gave with the bus and the, the airplane, they are more more generic. So I'm not sure what how we how we should where we should pose this problem in, in this mm -hmm. yeah, dimension. Mm -hmm. Like my approach to this, I have like a comment for for you, Hai Long, and to mm -hmm. the question itself. Like for the question itself, how much uh, is trust we want? It depends, like it, you cannot say this for like every scenario. Like you want to have constantly adjust your trust depending on the situation you're in. Like I, I link one, uh, I think my link was broken. Like, let me, I, I can repose the link in here, but it's from ISO 26262, which counts for vehicle controllability and scenario hazard. So you want to constantly be adjusting your trust levels based on the ODD and 
I don't know if this is the correct one though. And the okay, other one thanks. is just a paper like uh, which may be useful to understand this. But like what uh, I do understand that what you think about like situation the relationship between situation awareness and trust, and I do believe it's definitely there. But sometimes whenever we're talking about trust, we're not talking about trust about like you are constantly monitoring in, and you receive a message and you uh -huh. like trust in the system to do something. But sometimes you rely on the system to not be vigilant at all or, or to be out of the loop. So because, for instance, this is the whole point of level three. Level three automation is allowing you to reduce your situation awareness but to a certain degree. So it's not only about situation awareness, sometimes it's sometimes about reliance. And yeah. Yeah, so depends, depends like on what the situation you need to constantly be calibrating your, your trust level. It's like a level two system. It's an urban scenario. It's a high speed scenario. All those things need to be calibrated based on the threat of the scenario. Um, that's, that's really a nice comment. Um, we are running out of time, but we haven't talked about the under-trust <laughs> situations. Uh, do, you want, do you want to quickly go through the other situation here um, in the under-trust situation? Okay, I, I want to say, yeah. I want to show you this picture. Mm -hmm. Could you zoom in this one? Yeah. You can see here, there's a marker, lane change marker, right? Mm -hmm. It shows the, the, the vehicle will turn to right. But here, see, it's turn left. <laughs> because it's just a generic icon, yes. Yeah, this is a big problem, misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the, this is a real system. Uh, from Daimler. So, this one may make the driver under trust this system. Yeah. That's the inconsistence between the normal logo they would use in terms of the mm -hmm. real situation. I guess it's not yes. really easy for them to change the logo here. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that's a really a human factors problem, I think. <laughs> that's true. It will damage trust. Mm. Anyone want to talk about their thought? Uh, about the under trust situation. Uh, Rafael, did you get any idea here? Like one here that I mm -hmm. I kind of talked about yesterday during even Monica's presentation was what uh, some literature called weapon focus, where like you're about to crash. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the system is trying to warn you something, but you are so flustered with the situation that you don't pay attention to, like you don't rely on the system whenever it's trying to help you. So this is like, I don't know if it counts as under, uh, under trust now thinking about it because it's not a matter of trusting or not trust, it's just not attempting to it at all. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense here. Um, this is the lim time limit. I will move on to the <laughs> next. Mo Monica, do you also want to talk about your uh, situation here? Uh, did you put anything here? Yeah, yeah. I put in um, that I'm, I'm a very cautious person, so I, I don't trust in general. That could also be something that... Um, mm. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of like the original, or how do they call that? Situational or the uh, personal, uh, personal trait? Would be more personal. Yeah. I guess this one is uh, cautious. Yeah, here. I think they are kind of related. Mm -hmm. Low sensation seeking. <laughs> is that from Raphael? Yeah, because yeah, well, uh, in our team, we kind of measure their 
uh, sensation seeking propensities to see if the person is originally a more cautious or more aggressive driver. So um, it kind of related to their uh, driving performance. Okay. Makes sense. Um, and I also the, mentioned this too complicated user interface. So if it's too complicated, then I get the impression that it, uh, I cannot master it anymore. It must be, it's too difficult to communicate. So it, it, there, there should be some failure <laughs> on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's I think I would just add, oops, sorry, Chen. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, quickly add, because I think we're running out of time. We should have yeah. a coffee break already. Uh, I just. Yeah, I just also wrote it down actually describing the characteristic of the, the robocar of the systems. So I also put like aggressive system. So kind of like the system, if the system is patronizing me, like telling me um, or like the system make all the root decisions, then I think um, in that case, I would also under trust the system as there is no room for cooperative decision making. So makes sense like from different angles, the person's angle, also the system. Angle. I would say the mm, transparency of the system would be a problem. <laughs> it's really hard to see. Okay, cool. So uh, we kind of ran out of time. We are kind of a little bit over time. So uh, in the agenda, we are going to have a 15 minutes coffee break, and then we will come back. Uh, then Jing Yi will um, host the next session. We will talk about your ideas um, to build with these situations we just proposed. So we will see you in 15 minutes. Okay. Want to stand up. See you. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Hello. 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 All right, we are complete. Um, let's continue. All right, so we have discussed um this board um the situations that might lead to overtrust or undertrust. So these are the problems. And now we're gonna work a little bit on this board. Um, first, try to find, uh, basically try, try to find solutions, right? But first step will be try to think about what kinds of information would you need to avoid these um, problems, these previously mentioned situations. So for example, like there are two um, examples here. So. If the autopilot system causes overtrust issue, a information might be like the uh, system familiarity might solve this uh, overtrust in the autopilot system. And there are um, potential uh, solutions by education on the driver or propaganda from the dealers, for example. And these white sticky notes are for non-HMI solutions or solutions beyond HMI. Well, um, another example for the undertrust situations, like take over signal displays not in time, then the information um, might be to like inform the driver in advance and uh, concrete solutions, HMI solutions on the yellow sticky notes might be like warning sound effects or vibrations on the safety belt or even the lights on the head up displays as indicators. And so basically what I want to ask you to do is to copy your situations. For example, let me just grab mine. For example, I have this aggressive system, right? And um, yeah, you can, yeah, simply just copy and paste, bring it here. Um, or you have new ideas, just put it on the plenty sticky notes here. Um, and then think about what is the information, right? So, 
yeah, what kinds of information would I need to avoid this aggressive system um, design and how to um, really solve it via the HMI solutions or um, beyond HMI solutions. So last, uh, last note from my side would be, uh, you notice there were also links, right? But please leave this out for uh, the following 30 minutes. So in this part, we don't do the linking. Uh, we will do it in the summarize, um, in the following sum, sum up session. Is everything clear? Yeah. Great. So get your hands on then. <laughs> By the way, not only your own uh, situation, uh, maybe you want to comment on others' situation if you have better, you have some solutions to propose to deal with that situation. Just feel free to do anything here. Can you extend the, the pink board <laughs> or, or where should we put it? Just uh, extend it to the. Definitely. Uh, we can just. A little bit stuff. Yeah. Oh, in that case, maybe everything gonna. Mm, yeah. So let me just. Yeah, maybe just simply do it in this way. That's good.
Oh, excuse me, I have a question. Yeah. For example, the education, where should I put, put the education? Yeah, ideally, you can put it on the non-HMI solutions, like on the white we, sticky notes. White? Uh, can you see my oh, screen? I, oh, okay, I see, I see. Okay, thank you.
I think we still like have three minutes to finish the sticky note part and then we can have 10 minutes to discuss. Great. I think um, everyone hopefully has finished. Cool. So it's very nice, like some of you already do the linking already. Um, yeah, Any anyone want to go first? Um, I can have a very, uh, very simple goal. You can see uh, here, uh, just not here. Uh, here, you see my 
Yeah. Awesome. Yes. So I put this kind of uh, this kind of the, the different uh, driving drivers profile together to summarize them as a variety of different drivers. For example, low sensation seeker uh, driver profile. Then uh, when this situation happens, um, <clears throat> I would say maybe uh, <clears throat> we can deal with this situation by providing them with multiple choices or uh, settings uh, like here, then I give a slightly more detailed um, information here, like uh, especially for driving styles. Um, this is my <laughs> research area. Um, we kind of have different um, driving styles. Some are more robotic, more rigid, but some are more human-like. And even for the human-like ones, they, they, they ha we have like, uh, you know, more defensive one or more aggressive one. Uh, for different users, for different drivers, they may prefer different kind of uh, driving styles. So here, uh, if we give them different settings, maybe they can choose based on their preferences. So that's my example. It's very nice, and you put it on the. Oops. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you put it under this um on the white sticky notes, right? So it's yes. um a part of non HMI solutions. So how um any ideas how to implement it? How to realize these settings? Mm. So from my understanding, it's like um. If you say if you say it's a kind of HMI, I would also say it's kind of like the interaction, the human, mm, the human machine interaction things. Uh, but let's just limit HMI as interface thing here. Uh, so how to implement? Um, it's like it can have different uh, types of algorithms of uh, let's say learn keeping. Uh, then it can have, for more human-like one, maybe it can have more uh, drifts when, uh, when it's changing lens. Uh, for more robotic one, maybe some people prefer to keeping, it, uh, keeping the lens in the middle um, always. So that's what I mean, different uh, driving styles. Uh, then I would say let's give them more choices. I think Raphael also just put uh, some sticky notes linked to this, what Chance mentioned, right? Yeah, so uh, I'm just putting the things that I think that, that I put are similar, like nearby. Mm -hmm. Such so as shared control, like there's a thing, uh, some things in the literature that says like, that may be a way for you to improve like trust is having sort of like a shared control. If you think that the, the automation has been too harsh, you can literally like move your, the, improve some resistance and the system will adapt saying, no, I know more or less now how you want to drive and constantly be learning. Yeah, I think I also um, got a related idea here, like, um, Again, like the aggressive system design, right? Uh, I'm thinking about how to inform the driver or the passenger of the reason to design such aggressive systems um, because aggressive system might be needed under certain circumstances. That's why I put like to explain or to make it more like a white box to explain the design of aggressiveness of the system. And I think I've put some solutions here. Um, Yes, I'm thinking about uh, aviation, so like um, under turbulence, usually they're going to be like um, some warnings and also some indicator lights on. So that's why I'm thinking about uh, vision and auditory notification design of the upcoming, well, in our case, it's a vehicle dynamics, right? It's not the turbulence, um, but it might be a harsh break, but potentially, um, yeah, potentially like the system could notice this upcoming heartbreak and notify the driver, the passenger by visual auditory notification design in advance. And that's why I also put vehicle dynamics on the white sticky note. Um, yeah, somehow I think this is also like the kinesthetic um, sensations 
the driver or the passenger gonna experience after receiving the notification design. Anyone wanna go for next? I think that like related to this, another thing that I put in here was like, in terms of clarity of HMI and avoiding misunderstanding, like I haven't picked the, I think it was this one from, uh, from uh, sorry, which uh, later I can do this, but basically like patronizing system and warnings. Like if you have consistency across different systems over mm -hmm. the time, like you can make clear understanding. And so people will trust more in the messages if they're all consistent. I but think that's another... a good point, consistency um, of the patronizing design across scenarios. Could you maybe put it somewhere? Uh, it's in here, I just don't know where to put it. Okay, yeah, I'll just try to find on the place for this one. Another one that I've put is this one in here. Like, I believe that the system must have a way to adapt their behavior and not, not only their behavior, their warnings to the specific driver because there are different driving styles and things like this. So it was make, kind of like a, not exactly applicable right now idea, but it's like a way for the user to, for the driver to sense and understand that the user is flustered or not trusting it so much so we can adapt, which would like be linked as well with like too aggressive of a controller or also like with long distance trips and things like this. So it, knowing that the system, uh, the, the driver is in, inattentive or willing to over trust, it can counteract it. I think that's a really nice idea. And you link this uh, to a solution like driver's gaze or physio uh, physiological um, arousal levels, for example. So this is uh, kind of the way for automation like, system to learn about the driver. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cool. I also put a similar thing, but not that detail uh, in above uh, called Driver in the loop, HMI. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, physiological signal should be a good human in the loop solution. Um, where are you, Chen? Uh, yeah, I, I was looking at, yeah, I, I'm going to move it to the, so yeah, I'm going to move it to the physiological, <laughs> Where is your uh, I'm, I'm logical here. sticky note, uh, yeah. Raphael? Raphael. It's Raphael, where downwards, is your... downwards. Still down. Oh, sorry, I need to see. It wasn't here. <laughs> where is it? I don't know. Oh, I, I, oh, saw, it. I saw it. The, the driver's case here. Ah, here, here. <laughs> we have too many ideas here. Too. Which is great. Yes. I just have a quick question for all of you. Do you think um, for the, uh, for how do you communicate this information to drivers and to the, uh, passengers? And so maybe there are more uh, visual HMI designs, um, 
Would you personally prefer visual one than other auditory or you know more haptic? You know, it's a fan of oh. multi model. Hmm? Pardon? Hello, Hello, please go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot what, what, what I want to say. <laughs> it's sorry. okay. Uh, it's okay. Oh, oh, the how, how to show the information, right? Uh, I read some paper, the, for example, the sound, for example, some uh, worrying sound. The sound always by using for the worrying, mm. very emergency uh, situation could, could be used the sound. Uh, some, uh, how to say that? For example, the visual information. Of course, the visual information is e e easily to use, but what timing should be uh give this information that is a big question because if you give a lot of information to the user and at the same time they cannot uh, understand all the things may maybe haptic is a uh, other good tools i think and i also want to uh inform that the Professor Suzuki, one of the organizers, he used uh, the smile, you know, the smile at the interface to give some information to the driver. That is very interesting, I think. Yeah. Sorry to... May I, may I, um... Please go ahead, Monica. Yeah. One last comment. I just uh, thought about some um, elements that could uh, be communicated um, in a non-emergency situation. So more or less after, <laughs> after a critical situation to inform uh, the people. So one element was um, uh, yeah, perhaps uh, I, I start differently. So. Um, if you get experience that um, you have over trust because uh, nothing happened for a long time. And then um, at some instances, there could be short reminders of possible critical situations, such as that um, in bright sunlight, the systems might not be able to detect some objects and so on. But just uh, having short reminders um, um, of critical situations to, to keep this awareness and um, the other would be, um, yes. So if, if somebody doesn't understand the actions of a system, then perhaps this could also be communicated in terms of explanation session after the action. So when, when everything is back in normal mode, um, there could be a short explanation session. It, it is similar to education, but it could be selectively mm -hmm. included. I, of course, would not have an, an, an extended explanation during the critical situation, but after that could be perhaps be a good way to do it. What do you think? I think that's a really nice point. And um, I, I think know. I will just add, uh, sorry to cut you, Hailon, because I think we're running out of time. Okay. Uh, we need to move on to summarize, but I will just add what Monica mentioned here um, on the board. And um, I think I'd like to hand it over, over to Chen again. Mm, for the summarize, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just take a quick look. So uh, now we are going to show our <laughs> ideas to the other group, to the, um, to the whole uh, group. So, uh, so first we want, um, I, will, I, I will copy paste this to board, to the main board, uh, but at the same time, we need one uh, volunteer <laughs> to uh, talk up to, briefly summarize what we have discussed 
just now and what's our thoughts um, in terms of the in vehicle situations and our um, some some um, uh, solutions we proposed. Um, do we have any volunteer for this? Uh, so um, we can do. Yeah. Okay, can okay. do it with no one to go. I can do. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, so before we uh, come back to the uh, to the main board um, to see other guys, um, we could have a short summary within our group. We have a minute, uh, fifteen minutes. Um, so. Uh, Five minutes. I, I, I would yeah, I would suggest everyone uh, everyone like have a short um, like talk about uh, your understanding about this uh, this like the over um, about, about this overview. So I will start. So um, my my personal summarize of this session is. Um, we talked about uh, these under-trust and over-trust situations. And I noticed that uh, even we put more, it seems we put more under-trust situations in the uh, in this situation board, uh, but it seems we uh, propose a similar amount of solutions to both uh, in the second board, which is nice. And then uh, for more uh, solutions, um, we, it seems we proposed more HMI related solutions, uh, like, uh, like the um, heads up light indicator. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> and it's okay. And also uh, uh, like, um, so we, we propose generally we proposed uh, different channels um, of HMIs, and also we have some uh, nice non-HMI uh, solutions like the post explanations, which I think is quite cool. I didn't personally I didn't uh, think about that before, but I think it makes sense um, at least to help some users to rebuild rebuild their trust uh, if their trust got damaged or got uh, hurted during the, the, the uh, driving. So basically that's my personal uh, understanding about this. Uh, do you guys have any um, comments or um, on, on this summary? I would say that we clusterize our problems as well, like saying like too complicated HMI, uh, people who are inexperienced drivers or too cautious of a driver or in, or then like bad experiences mm. such as like this that uh, I long said. And also that we clusterize in here as well, saying like we need to understand and calibrate drivers, like the system behavior to base to the driver also that we need to clear like multimodal and more like white boxing in the system behavior. And also we, we put a lot of things about education. I, I think those are the most. Yes, right. Um, also, um, also um, I'd like to hear more comments, uh, but also we can take a look at the, the, in the very beginning we have the S break. Uh, the top concern question. So if you want, uh, maybe you want to link these questions to what we have put uh, in these solutions, um, like, um, um, do you think we kind of answer any question here? I feel the trust question, the trust problem is, um, it's, it, it's, it's always tricky. 
that it's subjective. And what we what we can do is it seems um, most situation that we provide is try to provide more information or keep the information in a you know, proper amount or uh, from different channel. Uh, I actually think this question is really interesting one, which we, we uh, might have not touched upon, like how trust evolves in a long-term interaction with AVs, especially from the driver and the passenger. I'm just thinking like, we've talked about education right here mm -hmm. on white sticking notes, but this is more like maybe uh, before you got your driving license for future autonomous vehicles, for example. So like, this is more like the post, uh, sorry, like the pre-education. But after I got my um, L5 car, for example, and then I'm using it daily, then this long-term usage going to change my driving profile, for example, right? I might become more aggressive in my driving style, and maybe I trust uh, more and more towards my uh, car system, for example. And in that case, how can, how can the AV uh, adapt to this um, personal change after long-term usage. Yeah. yeah so I, I'm an, an optimist and I, I think that um, if the systems are working properly, then people get used to them very quickly. As I, um, this uh, Waymo uh, videos that uh, JJ Riggs uh, is publishing. So, I, I get the feeling that he is uh, quite uh, quite comfortable on his back seat, so he feels very well. And um, I could ex uh, imagine that uh, once I make these experiences and not too many hazards um, happen, then uh, we will have solved the problem. But this might be a little bit over too uh, too optimistic because um, yeah, I think in the beginning before a technology is is included, uh, I remember. What people said, no, I don't remember, but I read it, that people said when first um, trains were introduced and people said, oh, this is causing very bad uh, effects on your health if you go more than five kilometers per hour. So this was incredible for, for many people and it might be similar here, but I think the crucial thing is safety. And if safety is mm -hmm. better, then uh, this might be okay. Yeah, so I think Monica also just mentioned this um, very important phase, right? Maybe uh, instead mm -hmm. of, or in addition to this pre-education, like before you got your car, but actually the first, yeah. I don't know, like the first 10 kilometers uh, driving or the first year or first half months driving experience, but like onboarding mm -hmm. education is pretty critical. Yes, uh, that, that is, uh, how, how do you say that? Uh, actually, the Xiaomi a company in China, uh, there is a very uh, small uh, personal personal uh, mobility vehicle. At the beginning, the system lock lock a part of the functions. You have to use the you you have to drive this vehicle to get some some tasks. So those function, the, the high level function will be uh, unlocked. I think that is a quite good idea for the AV, just like the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wonder the other way around, like someone who's using this vehicle and never had a problem for such a long time and, say, and then started to be complacent and say, okay, it never mm -hmm. failed in my hand. Why would it fail? Would, would it fail now? I can just take a nap and. Yeah. But I guess to address this problem, maybe it can be solved in the pre-education, right? Just in the mm -hmm. driving school, maybe just uh, put them in a simulator and really let them experience the fatal accident could be caused by the automation system. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I, I write here, the, I, I write this one. I think, think the in the future, who want to buy the vehicle should be passed the test before buying the AV, I think. 
Um, it, uh, Jenny, is that the time we need yeah. to go back to the main board? I think we still got like 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Or, oh, sorry. Yeah, I think we are about the time. Um, so we yes. need to go back to the main room, but yeah. apparently they haven't closed the rooms uh -huh. yet. Uh, I just copy paste the uh, the second session's board to the members, but I have a little bit problem with the uh, out area <laughs> notes. So if you come back to the members, can you just help me to move that to the, the, to the, um, the session we need to put it? Uh, yeah, I'll help you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I think it's okay for us maybe just to return to the main room. And sure. in any case, we can also chat there. Sure. Okay. Do we just leave this room and are back in the other one or do we have to log into the other room? No, I think like by leaving, you just go to the main room. Okay. So see you around. Yes. Yeah, see, see you then. See you.